we talked about surrender in terms of the money issue and lack of infrastructure, which is like one part, and very essential, and it's kind of even creating a fear to surrender because what will happen, you know, if there's no security net underneath. Mm -hmm. But the other part is that very process, which is internal. And it feels like, well, for me, for example, now in this immersion, that there's a surrender going, and not, you know, it, it feels like. Well, that all this is a wish to surrender, yet it seems like things are not mm -hmm. ready yet. So I just feel like uh, wanting to lean more and more back into it. But it seems it has its own time. So I feel also there's this double um, thing, the surrender and then the, the pushing to, to actually surrender, the pushing towards the final result. Mm -hmm. And in that process, that is the internal process. The external process is what then afterwards am I going to be of any you know? how are you going to make a living in other words yeah, exactly. how are you going to balance the books how are you going to be yes. paying the bills and having the roof and so forth yeah let's nail it on the spot let's you know because it's very valid very very practical very very important question very important consideration. So let's look into this from at least two perspectives. Let's look into this. First of all, when there is greater coherence and that's what a true healthy awakening characterized. Greater awareness, so the greater awareness is always accompanied by greater synchronicity in brain wave functioning. Greater synchronicity in brain wave functioning. What does that mean? Every time that awakened force every time that what is our consciousness, our consciousness, out of that contracted state, releases greater light into the system, which it illumines already. Yet whether it's the sleeve of that energy is enough to empower every sense perception and to give us an idea of who we are and perfectly function so that we can fly an airplane or the drive a car or even go into the space, solve mathematical equations, raise children, cook food, go to dancing, you name it, swim, jump, run, paint, compose. A sleeve of that energy is enough. Imagine what happens when greater amount of that energy is released. What it means is that each time greater amount of energy is released. Again, if I'm not leaning completely on that tantric language of energy, right? More consciousness, more light into the system. Then each time the respective cortexes in our brain are get lit up. Those that were dormant prior to that. Dormant. All education today is a result of hammering one part of the brain with some information. It makes us half developed, half educated. 
In fact, half is only a matter of language. Sliver educated, portion educated, portion of our brain. That mathematical genius, you know, and we think, oh, wow, this guy is so developed, or oh, this girl is amazing. But it's only one part of the brain. There's so many atrophies there. This genius comes into the relationships, he cannot have any relationship. Because that part is in atrophy. This is a tragedy of our day. The tragedy of our education. It's also giving the supremacy to the left hemisphere of the brain, which rules all linear thinking, logic, reason, maths, and so forth. Whereas left hemisphere of the brain should be subordinate to the right. This is neurophysiology. And this is why those who have been by sheer struck of luck given to the education where the creativity is the driving force, whether they studied it through, whether they got there through music, arts, or I don't know, some other struck of luck, then their right hemisphere of the brain would not lose this capacity. It's, as we know, it's the creative potential. But in the release of that energy, all cortexes prior to that and all areas that prior to that were dormant, this bulb went on, that little bulb went on, that little bulb went on. What I'm trying to say here is that awakening itself makes us more smart, not dumb, more capable, more creative, even when it comes down to the survival level. The example of must was given as an example when this process goes astray. When this process goes haywires, when we go solo, when we become DIY, when we do that, and India is the country where a lot of DIY going on. The West is becoming also the where a lot of DIY going on. Do it yourself, that's what it means. So first perspective is that one way or the other, it is the consciousness that is driving force. Consciousness. When we are more in consciousness, we are more capable of taking care of ourselves. Simply, simply because our brain potential, that which essentially the instrumentality through which we express ourselves as human beings, become more lit. And there is greater orderliness. Order, orderliness. Orderliness, thank you. Not ordinariness, orderliness. Greater coherence. Before that, everything fires in different direction. This idea, that idea, this idea, that idea, this idea, that idea. Oh, I cannot make sense out of it. Coherence is when there is a greater conductivity. Mason effect. You know Mason effect? When the superconductor is being connected, before that, impulses move in different direction. When the superconductor connects this field, then suddenly they all start to fire in the same direction. And it creates waves that flow in the same direction. That's what coherence means. The example, the cover of Deepak Chopra's book, when he talked about synchronicity, is that swarm a family school of fish swimming have you seen how they swim, how they change direction? This is like this school of fish swim in that synchronicity. Their bodies and their organisms are synchronized to a degree. There is no like fish thinking. Oh, they turn this way, time to turn. <laughs> no, just like the whole school goes, right? They, they change like in the light, how they, they even change the direction and the dimension. It's beautiful to watch. The same thing could be the analogous to what happens in our brains. What I'm trying to impress here now, upon you, is that do not fear awakening. Awakening will sort out your life if it is properly guarded, it is properly facilitated and has a good ground. It will make you more more of yourself, not less. You see? 
Whenever there is something more of yourself, there's greater potential, not less potential, not lesser potential. This is first, and it is foremost. Otherwise, we're putting cart before the horse. We're putting cart before the horse. There is no such thing as brain functioning on its own. There's no such thing as mind functioning on its own accord. And everything is a result of the way our mind works. Let's face it. Let's all realize it's the way our mind works. The organizational power of the mind is the result, essentially. No, sorry, not the result. It's really, really the effect, which is, again, it's the cause, the cause of how we are able to express ourselves. The greater potential of our mind utilized, the greater degree with which we can express ourselves. In fact, instead of having just this pathway, that pathway, and that pathway, this one I cannot take, this one doesn't open to me, I have no choice, I have to just walk this way. No, they become a multiplicity. Multiplicity of ways. We are no longer locked into a system where we only think this way, that way, that way. All this is available. That's what it means. That's what it means, awakened mind. Now, let's make a little concession and see this from a practical perspective as well. But this has to be understood. You have to understand this. <coughs> it's for your own good. For your own good. Otherwise, I can't surrender until I'm well enough. Well off enough. To me, it's like those writers or painters that when I, my life improves, then I will become creative. You're not an artist then. Sorry. Not you, I'm saying, you know. And life is gone. It's like, wow. I always wanted to write poetry. But day job was more important. You're not a poet. <laughs> you know? If it doesn't come out of you, then I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> so, one way or the other, you see, there's this driving force. It's not that first I'm in a position, then I will surrender. Done that perspective. I surrender regardless, because it's, it's too powerful, it's overwhelming, it takes me. It takes me over, or it takes me by surprise, one way or the other. And that fear, in a way, is like a locked-in mechanism. How can we unlock it? The only surrender can unlock it, because then it unties this. It's like in the machine, there's something gone locked, and we keep pushing it. No, it cannot keep pushing, it's locked. Unlock it. When something got locked, the only way is to unlock it. No, no way we can keep pushing it, you see? On the level of practice, we achieve from the level of intent. We achieve from the subtlest level of intent. All of you, I'm not a propagator of Deepak Chopra's work, but his earlier work is all steeped in the teaching of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. All comes from there. He was very close to Maharishi and he received, drunk from the other of a great Rishi. There is a slim book, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. There is nothing that I do not recommend in this book. It completely speaks of this very fundamental laws of success because it is spoken from the perspective of the laws of nature. Intent, the quality of intent, is one of the first fundamental laws. When we intend from the subtle level, and it has to be from the subtle level, from the level when we are not running around, squeezed, for instance, 
received the bad news now, right? Something, you know, like, oh, bill has, uh, the, the, the rent is increased. Lost my job or something. Oh, and you start intending in that chaotic state of imbalance because that news knocked you over temporarily. Obviously, the intent is very weak. Intent has to rise from that very, 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 very soothing place of composure. Best when you come out of meditation or when you are rested. Spend some time maybe in nature. Had a good day, taking off, you know. Then the thoughts cleared up and kind of like everything is seen clearer in a clearer light, in a more positive light. Pick that intent, okay? The intent, and be bold with your intent. Be courageous. Do not hesitate to ask the universe. Have a nice relationship with the universe. Ask the universe exactly what is it that you want. Ask what exactly is it that you want. This guy, essentially time was to go and he walks in heaven. And they go through this, like lots of goods. It's a joke anyway. <laughs> and these goods, you know, like just stored, like a store, storehouse, like a warehouse. You know, but it's in heaven, so it's kind of like very, very nicely done. <laughs> and then they go through many, many cars, right? And suddenly they pass these luxurious cars, and the guy looks at it, and the angel who is giving him a, a transit, right? He says, "Oh, that's one of yours." He looks at him. You must be joking. I had my like old sort of like you know Renault all my life. Well, I'm sorry. That's what you've asked for. <laughs> no, I like I asked just to give me a car. Well, you did not specify, so we thought you'll do with that. It wasn't specific enough. See, but the car was waiting there. If only he said like oh, I want that, whatever that is, you know, Merce or Buick. Cadillac, you know. It's an example, it's a joke. You know, take it or leave it. But there is some wisdom hidden in that. Unless we ask, how can we be given? Literally, there's no even harm to periodically have your list of wishes on a nicely made card. You know, beautiful card. Maybe in two halves. And put your wishes and start first in your diaries or in your notebook somewhere. What do you really want? And you know what? You'll have a surprise of your life. You, before that, you knew exactly what you want. Soon as you have to write down, you start to hesitate. So give it a little time. Put it down. Review it in a couple of days, give it a week and review it again. And it's not a must, but just a suggestion. Make one side material things. Do not be afraid, don't be the spiritual seeker who secretly desires this, but then feels bad about yourself desiring it. <laughs> you know? Nice red Italian scooter. <laughs> huh? With a beautiful helmet. Example. And another half is less material desires. Right? Desires maybe of that belong to qualities that you want. These are material qualities that make your life more perhaps simply enjoyable or easier. Right? The other list is this qualities that you want to, you know, maybe more patience, maybe more tolerance, maybe more perseverance, maybe more courage. 
Just sketch that list and see how you go. And then maybe turn that card and that kind of like the ultimately, you know, the, the desires that are the most sacred, you know. And then put them into the envelope and keep it next to you, you know, like your private thing. Open it sometimes, read it and close it, you know. There's no harm. It's very useful. And let the universe to handle the details. Literally, let the universe handle the details, how it will be delivered. But remember what have been said before that, is that it is these methodologies that we utilize, methodologies of consciousness, that makes us more capable of essentially being here, enjoying, fulfilling ourselves and receiving this gift of life rather than feeling contracted by on the account as that, you know, like I'm in a disadvantaged, disadvantaged stage. Do you know that can reverse the tables? There could be someone sitting here and says, you know, I'm a what is this CIO you know, of a big company? Yeah. CEO. CEO, yeah. I'm a CEO, you know, several billion operation. You know, it's tough. It's a really tough life. No time for private life, very little time for spiritual practice. What am I to do? How can I surrender? Do you see what I mean? What's the difference? It's also a predicament, isn't it? Just completely different predicament. If only there are several billion, billions, I don't know where to put these billions into. <laughs> you know? I have very little time to sleep and with my family. And, you know, I have these boats and chauffeurs and, you know, like constantly jet setting, dinners, you know, symposiums, attend, conference calls. Where's the time to surrender? So I want you to be, bear in mind, you know. What about Queen of England? Should she, should she surrender the UK? <laughs> the United Kingdom? I bet she wishes she could. Sometimes. You know? Then we begin to understand it from a very different perspective. There is never a more perfect place than now, <laughs> you know, if that propensity there to evolve simply doesn't exist. Each situation will present you with a new set of circumstances it's where the karma will play itself out. All three currents of them, the prarabdha, the sanchita and the agami, all these different currents of karma will present itself all the time. So at least use that, utilize that portion of karma which is mendable. Nothing we can do about that which is that overall, let's say, river. I am born into that river, so I cannot change that river. It flows where it flows, you see. But you can you can navigate its currents within, you see? And there are, in the philosophy of karma, in the understanding of karma, there is karma that we make at each instant. Begin now. Do not hesitate. And the self-realization, ultimately, awakening, is capable of transforming the very, very seeds that are a plenty in the causal field. You see? This is becoming a co-creator of your reality rather than somehow taking a position of a victim somehow. Get out of that place of victimization. Begin to be a sculptor, that potter, you know? Do not accept that passive place. And you will see how reality instantaneously begins to change. 
It becomes more mendable and responsive, just like that clay in your hands. And your hands are here, loving, beautifully, essentially connecting to that matter, you know, to that clay. Yeah, I'm not, yes, I'm not against this, but I just, it's not to put a lead on that, not at all. At some point, be careful what comes into your mind. At some point, that's what awakened state also characterized by. When the Siddhis start to play themselves out, watch it, man. You know, slightest desire appears there, is fulfilled to you. At first, it may be a nice kind of playful exercise, but then it may become an obstacle in itself. So this whole thing, I will have a scooter by then. I would say then be careful what you intend, what you desire, what you place your emphasis. Okay? I will be in a much, much more better position next year at this time because the whole set of circumstances will transform, you know. But invite the possibility also of unexpected, okay? Forget about that example with the guy in heaven. Instead of that red scooter, maybe there will be some kind of reshuffling and negotiation on your behalf. Within yourself, look, maybe this. And then, oh, I'll take it, it's cool. It's a green scooter. <laughs> you know? What we're trying to say here is that wish list is also the list of desires. I want you to be bold to call it list of desires. I desire this. But at the same time, at the same time, putting it to paper is to giving it a rest as well. You see? Putting it to paper is to releasing it, releasing it, not like a kite holding it, you know. Releasing it to the universe to handle the details. Releasing it. It will come back to you because that intent is then being put out. But otherwise, gently resist the desires of running after things in the world. Bring it back to your heart and let it rest there. Let it rest there. So that, you, that these desires don't take you out of your own self, doesn't take you out of your, essentially... Transient object. Yes. Yes. But we're speaking about something else here. We're speaking about that lack, sense of lack of security. So we want to find a balance here. We want to be able to completely take care of ourselves. We want to always feel that there'll never be not enough. Another exercise I always recommend is when you lie down in bed and you have almost like that kind of, I'm not just part of nature, I'm nature. Nature takes care of all my needs. I'm being taken care of. I'm here, surrendered to that process. I'm free of worry. This is taking it out of that lock system. It helps. Because when we walk in that contracted state, it only perpetuates the same thing. And we when then fall into that, I will never be able to do that, well, I wasn't born to, you know, this, or the situation has been for too long. Some report to me, well, I know this environment, how can I find a job? I better go to India and lock myself into the ashram. No, bring India here. India always here. I've always been here. If only we realize that. And then suddenly, suddenly this is what I know, this corner shop here, that street here, that business here. Whoops! It's transformed. Suddenly I haven't had a clue. It's actually life here going on. In other dimensions of this life. And offers start knocking on my door. 
because I'm no longer locking myself into just this outcome. Just this is possible. Try this. Let's try this first before we say that, oh, this is all hypothetical. Shall we?